Georgia prosecutors are investigating whether President Trump broke the law in his attempts to overturn the state's 2020 election results. During a now-released phone call from January, Mr. Trump can be heard asking Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to find him more votes. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have. Mr. Trump lost Georgia to now President Biden by about 12,000 votes. On Wednesday, Fulton County's Democratic District Attorney sent a letter to Secretary Raffensperger, as well as Governor Brian Kemp, both Republicans, advising them to preserve all records related to the election. She added that particular care should be given to, quote, evidence of attempts to influence the actions of persons who were administering the election. Now, it comes as House impeachment managers argue it was not only President Trump's words on January 6th that incited the Capitol riot, but also his allegations of election fraud leading up to the attack. Greg Bluestein joins me now. He's a political reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Hi there, Greg. So what do we know about why this investigation was launched and what kind of resources are being devoted to it? Yeah, well, the newly elected Fulton District Attorney, Fannie Willis, has been considering this action for weeks now, especially after that tape you just mentioned emerged on January 2nd. And then today, as you mentioned, she sent letters not only to Governor Kemp and Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, but also Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan and Attorney General Chris Carr asking them to preserve these documents. And in the letter, she outlines just how far and how broad this investigation could go. She's looking at uh, potential violations of Georgia law, including election fraud, false statements, conspiracy, racketeering, violation of oath and office, and any involvement in violence or threats related to the election administration. So this is a broad, broad outline of what she could be looking at. And she, she looks like she's going to move pretty quickly. Well, what kind of charges does the former president potentially face from his phone call with Secretary of State Raffensperger? Yeah, with the Raffensperger call in particular, um, what prosecutors have indicated looking at is a state law prohibiting the solicitation of election fraud. Um, so if, if, if state attorneys, if, if the Fulton County District Attorney's Office can prove that this was a, a solicitation, that the, that the former president was was demanding that Brad Raffensperger commit election fraud, um, elections experts, legal experts in Georgia say that under state law, um, there could be a criminal violation right there. Well, this connects with the arguments House impeachment managers are trying to make, that the attack on the U.S. Capitol followed weeks of false allegations from former President Trump that the election was somehow stolen. Has the Trump team responded to news of this investigation? Yeah, you're exactly right. This this case, this phone call is factored directly into the impeachment proceedings going on right now. And yeah, the, the Trump senior advisor, Jason Miller, responded basically questioning whether or not the timing um, was was uh, was meant to damage the former president's case during the impeachment trial. Um, he said the timing is not accidental and that it's simply another d attempt by Democrats to score political points against the former president. Uh, finally, Greg, I also want to ask you about Georgia's state Republican Party. After losing the two critical runoff races, which flipped control of the Senate to Democrats, they also lost the general election for the first time since 1992. Now, in June, the party will have the chance to elect new leadership. So who's running and what are their ideas to address these defeats? Yeah, this would be a big moment for state Republicans because it's not just a matter of who's going to lead the state party, but it's also a matter of how they're going to funnel, how that new the state apparatus is going to funnel millions of dollars in resources, direct volunteers, and really cast the tone over the 2022 election cycle when every statewide constitutional office is up for grabs and Republicans will be trying to, uh, to unseat newly elected Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. Right now, David Schaefer, um, who's been the re Republican chairman of the state party for the last two years, is running for another term. He faces at least one opponent, Jason Shepard, who comes from Cobb County. He is uh, a suburban Republican who says that, that David Schaefer fell through on his promises uh, to lead Republicans to victory. There will also be some other Republicans, I think, getting into this contest as well. All right. There's always another election to look forward to. Craig Bluestein. Greg, always great to have you. Thank you very much.
Thanks for having me.